Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, lots of lovely people watching here and I can see there's some familiar faces there as well. So it's so nice to see your company. And we're going to be working with painting a bouquet today. Um, I am going to change a couple of my colors just so that it's easier for you guys to see what we're doing. But you can see here, we've got lots of lovely options of how we bring these flowers together. So I'm going to do a very little bit of brush loading right at the very beginning, but I'm gonna focus on building the composition, how we actually layer up the petals to get the different centers that we've got, and then building this and creating the different stroke work and the order that we paint in as well, because that is becoming more and more important. And just um, a couple of things for everybody that's watching at the moment. So I know now a lot of you have got your paints out the bottles and you are doing some fabulous painting. I'm seeing some great improvement as well because the more you practice, of course, the better we all get. So what I want to do is over these classes now, I'm starting to get into a little bit more detail and we're starting to become not not super advanced, but we're moving forward. We're getting ready to get to take the next steps because there's a long way that we can still go on this painting journey. We're still very much at the beginning. There's a lot more that I can be teaching you. Don't forget those free classes are really important that if you get the chance to join us, do. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's where you will see everything and you can go back and you can watch it again and again. And if you hit the bell icon, you actually get a notification when we've uploaded a new video. So that just tells you when they've actually appeared. So I'm going to get started straight away. I'm just going to, for um, anybody that has never done this before, and if you're joining us for the very first time, thank you. I'm also just going to let you guys know that at some point during this, a lovely Amanda, um, sorry, not Amanda, the lovely Hannah, is going to pop in for a moment and just take a couple of photographs of me and our camera set up because we also have a blog now. And so I'm going to be doing some blogging about teaching people to paint. So that'll be another one for you guys to watch. So first of all, with this, I'm going to start with a number 20 flat brush. So it's from the collection that we're all familiar with. I'm going to be working with that one because this one gives us the biggest scope to be able to paint those lovely petals. When you start, remember there's a lot of spring in, these, in this brush. All that spring that you've got is going to be used up, allowing us to do those lovely wiggles. Sometimes what I do is when I haven't painted for a few days, I'll get my flat brush before I load the paint, just familiarize myself again with that, that spring. And rather than putting my arm on the desk, because that will be a license for it to go wrong for you, what you're going to do is you're going to lift this up and you're going to put your little finger out. And that is how we're going to support our hand. So we're going to use that to actually support it. So when you first start, you would want to put your little finger in the brush level. But as we apply pressure, it's that part of it. So I've actually just moved that brush down a little bit. So I move my hand down the bristles so that I can support it. So let's get our paints out. And we're going to start with our white. So I'm using just a stand, the standard white, our um, 001, which is a fabulous color. I'm also going to be working with Sedona. So these are some of the colors that you got in this collection. Now remember, I've only changing my color because I want it to be easier for you to see, not because I think it's the right thing with this collection. I think what you're getting is a perfect collection of colors. I've got some yellow and I'm also going to use a little bit of leaf green here. So let me just get this down the bottle and then a little bit of leaf green. And with each of them, you can see I've got quite a generous amount of paint. We're working with our Cadence Hybrid Acrylics, which give us the best quality finish that we could actually want with, with this. And I'm going to start off by using the green and the yellow 
and those two colors are going to be the start of my leaves. So I'm going to load one corner of my brush in the green, one corner in the yellow. So we've got two corners of paint. So this is our corner loading. I'm then going to pull that paint into the bristles of my brush. And you'll notice I've got the yellow face in the yellow and the green face in the green. So let's go back in again on both of those colors. And I'm just pulling that paint down until it is at least two thirds of the way up the bristles. It wants to feel creamy before we start to paint. So we're just gonna go here, just getting that nice and creamy. Once it feels creamy and you don't have to pick up both colors, if one of them feels right and the other one just feels a little bit um, scratchy, then stop and put an extra little bit of paint in. So the first composition that I want us to look at is this one. And what I'm looking at is where these leaves need to go to be able to put the flowers in and make the whole thing come together. So I'm going to work in this part of my page. And I'm going to start off with the green to the top. And I'm just going to be sliding that brush, wiggling it and slide. And look at how creamy that yellow looks. It's absolutely stunning. Now I've got a little bit of a fluffy edge just on here. And I'm, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to come back onto here. And in fact, you can go over the whole thing and just slide that in and bring that color right the way through. So when I'm putting on the next lot of paint, what you will have just noticed was I didn't dip into my colors. I pulled the color down the brush first, then I'm going to dip, and then I'm gonna come back onto here. So I'm now gonna put the second of those leaves on, just there, and again, turn my brush over so I can use that paint. And let's just pull in the stem, then pull the paint, back down the bristles. You can see it looks really smooth and creamy. A little bit more of each of those colors and load that down and then I'm gonna come down here. Now, this one I've just I've curved and pulled down. On this one, I'm just gonna turn it and slide it, whoops, with a little bit more paint. So we'll come again, we're gonna turn and slide into that middle like that. So we've got a nice smooth side on that part of the actual um, leaf. Then again, I'm gonna come around here. This time I'm coming off on this side. Occasionally when I'm doing the compositions, I don't mind too much. If I lose a little bit of it and I get the odd bit where the, the paint's faded, remember you can go in and change it if you choose to, but it's also quite nice occasionally to put some texture in and I'm just coming up here and I'm building in the detail and putting these elements in and I want this to come from behind the roses which is why it's important that it's where it is. I've got a couple of little um, petals that need to go in but I'm not going to worry about those at the moment. I'm going to go back and we're going to start with these roses. Before I do I need to get some of this green off my brush. So we're going to use a wet wipe. So no water, just a wet wipe. Try and get the unscented ones if you can. And I'm just going to take that out. And we don't want those expensive facial wipes because they've all got additives in them to make your face nice. Doesn't do anything for a painting. <laughs> okay, so I've taken off as much of that paint as I think I need to. And I'm now going to go into the Sedona and into the white. And the little bit of green that's left will just make um, the Sedona have a tint and the white have a tint, but that's quite okay, because we're, we're all right with that. So first of all, I'm making sure I've got plenty of both of those colors. We're gonna paint that first rose just here. So I'm going to, I'm imagining in my head where that rose is going to sit what it's going to look like. And then this one is going to come over here and just sit just there. So I'm thinking about the composition. And then I'm going to have that other one, that third one is going to come up here. 
So you can see that I've got a position for each of these. My little bud will end up there and I'm going to end up with a couple of leaves here and maybe a couple of leaves just there. So I've sort of laid out my composition. Because I've been touching the brush to the paper, I've actually started to spoil the chisel edge. So before I paint, I'm going to come onto here and I'm going to pull that back together. And then using where I've just made those little marks as a guide, I'm just going to start to lay down this first rose. And as I'm working, I'm just applying some pressure. And what you'll do as you get more advanced, you won't work round in a regimented order. You'll start to place the petals in different places. Because what happens then is we get a much more natural look as to where these overlap each other. So you can see these two are overlapping the petal below. Got the same thing happening just here. So it looks more natural than getting that windmill effect that we get sometimes when we just go round in a circle. So I've layered down that first layer of petals. I'm now going to put another set in across this gap. So where these two petals overlap, I want to be able to put myself another petal. I'm going to do the same over here. So I've left a little gap and then put another one in. I'm going to build in another one just here. Now underneath where I've just painted, there was quite a little bit of the pink, the Sedona. And what happened was because I didn't have as much paint on my brush, I've pulled quite a lot of that through. So I lost the white edge. So I'm going to come back onto my palette, just pull the white through my brush. And I'm just going to go over it and look at how much smoother it is, more creamy. And it just is slightly more graduated. This time, just picking up the white. So I've got more white on my brush. You can see. There, I'm layering down those petals. Let's put another one of them just here. We're filling this center just with really pretty leaves. And so we've got lots of layers of color going on here. And we haven't finished because we still want another shell petal. Another one here, a small one, because we're going to go quite tiny with the bud in the middle. So we're going to go just there. And in fact, I'm just going to, because I feel like I've got quite a bit of black in the middle that's still going to need some work, I've put a second one in. And now I've got those parallel lines and we're going to go up and over. Now I really can't see where that bud is. That means that's telling me that I need to be good with my white, bring it back and just line that colour up. And then coming back the other way, I need to make sure again that I've got that white to build in the central colour. And I'm just going to let you see how delicately I'm loading my brush. I'm just loading it. I'm thinking about the tip of that brush and making sure that I'm going to get that lovely edge when I come to put the second line down. And of course, now we're ready to get some of those curves in. So we put the first one in. I'm going to put the second one in and go quite high. And this third one, I'm going to bring down low and fill in that gap. So you can see we've created that beautiful rose. And now we're ready to move on to the next one. So without changing the colours on my brush, I'm now going to pick up some of that yellow. And I'm going to put the yellow where the Sedona was. I'm going to take the white and get those colors to come together and just build up that. But I'm working in a really short space. I'm not working the palette for my brush loading. Keep that brush control and look at how these colors are now so beautifully rich. So we're working with three colors on our brush. So this time I'm just going to pick up the yellow then the white, pull those colours together and you'll see how this starts to bring in another shade to our designing. 
and it really does look quite lovely and quite delicate. And I'm going to pause for a moment to go on to one of the teaching guides and just talk to you about this one. And when you look at it, the colours look almost like it's a misprint, but it's been done on purpose so that you can see the layers of the colours. So you, it, we almost had to pixelate the image for you to be able to see that you've got, I wanted you to be able to see the differences of the colours. So you could see where I'm picking up and loading these other elements to get this sort of multicolour finish. Because when the paint comes together, it's so much more subtle. So I'm going to carry on with this one, doing what I've just been talking about. So multi-loading, picking up some of the Sedona, some of the white, bringing that into the yellow. So you can see there you've got a difference with the two shades. Then I'm coming back into the yellow and the white and making that one part of it. And then back in again. And this time I'm coming right down here so that we've got those colours. And now you're starting to see that colour blend in and those colours really bringing in that detail and design. And look at that, how you've got almost this sort of where the sun catches the petals, the colour just changes slightly, enough to give us a little tint of colour. And this time I picked up the Sedona on my brush. So as I bring in this little scallop at the back, you can see that contrast. And now keeping that white edge really super clean so that I can get that little bud in. Going back, getting the white edge once more and bringing that in again and again once more. And it's delicate, it's detailed, but it looks so much richer and also more carefully painted than the one next door. Both painted with the same love and attention, but just that extra colour makes all the difference. And look at that, just pretty. Now, um, when you're loading your brush, you can load it every single stroke, or you can just be literally sweeping it each stroke. It really depends on how this is feeling when you're working. Now, on the painting guide that I've got here, you actually have got this petal behind this flower behind this one. So the order that this sheet was painted was this one, this one, then this one. I'm gonna paint a slightly different order. So I painted here, then I painted here. I'm now gonna paint the bud and the bud is super easy. So Sedona and um, the lemon. And then where the white was, I'm gonna pick up the lemon as well. And for the bud, I'm literally, I'm going to go up and just hold it like that. And then from, I'm going to start in the same place and I'm going to go up and round and just come back down. So we're just creating these little buds. And I'm going to put another one in here, up and just round. And you can just pull back if you want to. And then on the other side, up and round and just get that little bit of a bud. And in fact, I'm going to go up to this one because I don't like that sharp point and just pull that round like that. So I've got a couple of these little buds. Let me get a little bit more there. So I've got a couple of these little buds in and now we'll go in and we'll put this other one in. So it's a slightly different angle. You can see that it's sort of peaking upwards, if you like. So what we need to do when we're doing this one is I need to be building my petals up in layers. So it's very important that this edge of the brush, so this top edge here, there, when it touches the colour, that there is a contrast between the colour on the brush there and the colour that it's going to hit on my page. So I'm just, you can see, otherwise the petals will just blend into each other. So think about it. Does it want to be more yellow or does it want to be a bit more white or could I, could I do with it having a little bit more of a pink tinge? Just think about what colour actually is going to make the difference. And you can see what I've done. I'm just bringing these petals round 
And then I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to utilize this part of it. And I'm just going to build in a petal and I'm just going to turn it on the chisel edge. So I've got a petal that's sort of almost fallen down. And my little bud would be tucked right inside there where we can't see it. So I've got my detail of the design. Now I'm going to take some of the green. I'm not cleaning my brush down. I'm going to utilize that color that I've got. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the white and that green. Let's get a bit more detail. So for my buds, I'm going to hug the bud and just pull round. On this side, I'm going to hug and just pull round. Hello, Hannah. So I did tell you the lovely Hannah was going to come in. She's here. She's going to just take some photographs. So I'm just going to hug the bud and pull round. Hug and pull round and just pull round. Then same thing. So now I'm just going to take a little turn on the top of the brush and pull round. So each time we're pulling that bud into the story so that you've got that lovely curved shape. Now we said we were going to put a couple of flat leaves just here. So let's put one just there and a second one just there on the edge of here. We're going to put a lovely little flat leaf. So we'll come down here and then we'll come down here. Thank you. That was quick. She's been and gone. And then that little stem take, brings in that leaf. And then we've got two other leaves to put in and these are slightly different, but they're a lot of fun to do. So the way that you work, you're going to go, you're going to slide almost like chisel slide up to the leaf coming down in a bit of a curve. And then we're just going to slide that back. So it looks like the leaf is just on the underneath of it. So the underside of it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to chisel slide like that and then just pull that back round. I'm going to take that one into there and the other ones where it is. And it just looks pretty. But there's one last thing that we can do to finish this off and it isn't on your guides but it's very simple for me to teach so we're just going to pull up and go out in um, a v and everywhere you've got a stem you're going to create another v just like that and everywhere we've got a stem we're going to create a v so we're going to keep going with this bringing in those little v's and I think probably I might just put, maybe I'm just going to leave it just where it is. I think that's what we'll do. And then the next part of this is you're going to take one of your round brushes and you're going to give it a haircut. And I like to call this a lockdown haircut because it gets, it doesn't want to be perfect. It wants to be a little bit scruffy. In fact, the scruffier, the better. So how about that? That looks a bit like the haircut Carl gave me when he took my ponytail off in lockdown. There you go. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this was a number 16 round. It's now our scruffy brush. So I'm going to pick up some of the white and some of the green so that you, you can see that it, it literally has got those two colors on the brush. And we're gonna pounce it. And we're really pushing that paint in like this. And then, and do you know, Andrew just said to me, he said, why don't we just sell these brushes? And I've been trying for three years to get a manufacturer to make this brush just like we need it. So that we don't have to cut up our brushes and you know they always come back too perfect they're just too perfect and don't help us at all with what we're trying to do and we can't get the same effect so this way stencil brushes don't do it you know you need this bit of just scruffy pouncing 
And of course, if you want a smaller brush, then you use a smaller, um, a smaller size to chop. And Andrew, I think, is volunteering to take them in and do commissions for the weekends. Those of you who don't know who Andrew is, he's actually the voice in my ears. He's my eyes and ears. He's our producer, director, and he is actually rather good. Okay, so you can see now I've built that composition. I've put that lovely bit of gypsophila at the top. I think that would look lovely going around the corner of a cupboard. Um, or you could put this around a vase. And remember, this paint will go on to literally any surface. So that's one of our compositions. I want to look at a couple more. So first of all, the next one we're going to work with, we're going to start with our stems. So I'm going to pull my colour together and on the chisel edge, I'm going to lead with the yellow and follow with the green. Now, I'm just going to show you the difference. So if I lead with the yellow and follow with the green, the green will go over the yellow. If I do it the other way round, the yellow is going to go over the green. Oops, I've done that same thing. Um, the yellow will go over the green and I will end up with a different colour. You can see the difference in the colour. That one stands out far more. So we make sure we lead with the yellow, follow with the green. So lead with the yellow, follow with the green. Just doing this a little bit thicker. And as I get towards the top, I'm just making it a bit thicker still. And the same with this one and with that one. Not worrying that the stems have run out of a little bit of paint but what I am going to do is I'm going to come up and put them in here put some detail in them so these are like our little thorns so we're just going to put these in I've got a little wobble there so we might as well have a couple there too and I'm just going to come up here we'll put that one in there okay so I've got some places to put some buds and some actual detail I'm going to put some really nice flowers in here and um, before we do that, I'm going to paint those leaves. So remember when we did the first ones, we came, so our rose leaves, leaves are going to come out from the side. But so we did this first one, we pressed down. Whoops, not happy with that brush loading. So I'm just going to get that together. And I think I need a little tiny bit of white in there. It's better. So we then are going to come round and we're just going to almost on the chisel edge of the brush come up and then press you can press down and then come back up and pull round like that so you've got a leaf looking like it's got some movement and it's turning then i'm going to do another one up here so again just jaggedy there then push down turn and this time i'm letting the dark green go into the middle so it, again, it looks like our leaf's turning. Then this, then from here, I come into this part of my design. And here, I'm going to come into this part. But then I'm going to cross over those two. We're just going to put in one more leaf. And I'm going to do that one like this. I'm going to come round like that so that we've got another leaf up there then we'll do the same on this side so we're doing like that up to the top and then this one pulling in to the top again like that and one more just here wiggling up to the top and then this one just the same up to the top and that one can come from there so i've got some leaves in there and i've got a bit of movement in my design the next thing i need to do is take off this green paint and we'll put those buds in at the top okay so we're going to pick up the sedona and the white now for the purpose of this i'm going to use I'm hoping i've got some a little bit of a darker shade. So let's pick something complementary. So I think we'll go with um, cherry. And I'm going to do this so I can show you how to triple load your brush. So we've got a little bit of that cherry in there. 
So I'm just picking up that cherry colour. See, it's going to give that Sedona a lovely tint. So we can see there. So I go white, Sedona, cherry. So the order is I swipe the white, I swipe the Sedona, I swipe the cherry, then I load my brush. And what you will see will happen as I paint, I will get those three colors. You can see the cherry just here. So I'm just putting in this color. I've got a little bit of the green coming through, which is interesting. I quite like it, so I'm gonna leave it there. So I've got that nice, lovely, really rich design. Just pulling all that paint down. And I'm gonna come in here, and I'm now gonna do a big sweep, and then a few little tight buds. I'm gonna come into my white, into my cherry. I've got plenty of paint in the middle of the brush, so I don't need the Sedona. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do another one. And again, I'm just gonna get some little buds in there. This time, it's just the white I'm picking up. So I want another layer of petals in here. I'm gonna come round and sweep round. Get that lovely nice curve that we need. I'm just going to come back into this one and do it once more to get nice and smooth. And I'm going to do the same here. So remember those big, when you get lovely, almost sort of like a little heart shape rose petal. That's what we're aiming to get. And then I'm just go once more, just going to get bring this colour together because I've started to lose my shading so I'm just going to get that back concentrating on the colors on my brush so there there's one part and then I'm going to come again to that part so you can see how we're building the layers of the petals up I'm going to go into here and just put whoops need some white on that edge just get that so I'm just going to put a little tiniest little bud just peeking through there. Just get that nice and smooth. And then this one, going to come around again and let that come through. And then round here. And you can see how you can really be playing with the position of these petals. And then this one, I'm going to get a little frill round and you're going to go up there. And then I've got another one to put in just here. So we've got that one in. And then I'm going to bring this one in and I'm just going to bring it right round there. Maybe a little one up there. So you can see how I've really opened the rose up and it's laying down to the side. Then we're going to take another one. This time I'm going to use some of the, um, the yellow, the lemon. And this time it's going to be a much tighter flower. So it's going to literally be just the top sort of few petals of the, of the flower itself. And whoops, got the, dipped in the wrong brushes. So I'm going to come back, correct my brush loading. I'd literally mixed my colours there, which would have spoilt it completely. So we'll get that in, get that colour mix good. And I'm going to put that little bud in. And I'm just going to put it in really high. Because what we're then going to do is we're going to almost cover it. So just put that little bit of detail there. And then this time I'm going to come round with a with a detail to get that really delicate finish in the center. And I'm gonna go again, just there. And then this time we're gonna go out like that and pull round. And I'm gonna go out, so I'm wiggling out, almost very similar to when we did this leaf. Wiggling out like that and just pulling round. So it's almost sort of all encapsulated in that bud and then we're going to do 
another little bud. And this one's going to be coming up here. And I'm going to come up on the chisel edge and pull down and round. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Up, come round on the chisel edge and pull round. Now I need to put a little one of these little centers in. So go up and over, round and under. So like that. And I'm going to come round and up and back round. And then one last petal, which is here, just going to come up there. So we've got a lovely little rose bud. Because they look good in pairs, I'm going to do a second one just here. So up and back round is the first part of it. Take a tiniest little bit of the yellow and we're going to go up and back round. But you can see that tiny little bit made the difference. So then a little bit more of the yellow. And that's going to go up and over there and round and under. So we've got that little bit of detail. And look at how I'm now, I'm not, when I'm working with this brush, I'm not laying it down all the time. I'm not tipping into my thing. I'm actually thinking about what does this brush need to be able to give me the depth of color that I need, where I need it. You know, what are the two colors or three colors that I need? So now when I come to put that other petal in, I'm just going to little wiggle a little bit and wiggle a little bit on here and come back round. You can see how the bud's now hidden inside this part of the design, which is what we wanted to do. And then on this side, and we're going to put a really sort of floppy flower. So we're going to get some detail in here. And I'm just going to put a really floppy flower in. So I'm going to take some of that white and get myself a proper couple of really sort of wide open petals. So they're just lending themselves to that openness that we want. Before I finish them, I'm taking a little bit of green on my brush and I'm gonna come up here, just the edges of those roses, just the edge the tiniest little bit, just as a hint, and then touch the top, a slight turn, and pull that down. We'll just do the same here. I'm just going to touch the top, let that fall behind that leaf, and then just come down here. And then take the green off the brush, back into here, Sedona and yellow. So I'm cleaning up the color building the shade here so I've got that detail and with the little bit of white I'm just going to put in that little bud just there so that bud is coming off to the side and you've got another little bit of the design so you can see how these flowers are just all filling the gaps the petals going in where they're needed. Not, not very keen on that brush loading. Don't like the result I got. It's not smooth. It's not creamy. So I'm going to go back in. Repeat my process. Go over it where it's necessary. Just get that nice and cleaned up. You notice I'm turning my brush. Just picking up slightly darker, stronger colour. So that we can see some more detail here. So just there and then this one will need to push around and slide push and slide and we've got that flower just falling open to the side so that it looks like it's a lovely composition now we need to tidy this up and pull it all together so this one needs a proper curve and bring it into the side also could have some little side leaves so push and pull push and pull push and pull push and pull then come back into the calyx 
here and just tidy that part of it up. Have a look at anywhere that we might want to put some detail, putting in some maybe some little tendrils, anywhere where we might want to even go over our flowers so that we've got some extra detail there too. And let's do that. And then finally, that last little bit where we're going to go up and we're going to do that baby's breath again, because that really is one of the finishing touches when you come to do your roses. So I'm going to come up here and remember those V's, make the V, make the V, keep, try and keep your chisel edge nice and tight because it will make a difference. Got two pieces there. I'm going to put a piece in just here because this will finish off the design. And I've got that just there. So then I'm going to take my white and a little bit of the green, plenty of white. Make sure you keep those colors separate. Pounce it really well. White to the top. Just that little bit of green is just going to be finishing off the design. Giving us that extra little bit of just detail in here but also just sort of texture as well so you can see it works really well over your petals as well as underneath them so you can build it in just like that and up here once more just pushing in that extra little bit of detail there and there's another one of our bouquets. And so you're building up different compositions and different styles. So we go from a corner to a lovely bouquet with flowers. Now we could add in some more buds. I could really fill this out. If I was going to do that, I'd probably put a bud here. I might put another bud just here or even up higher and probably another full flower just here. So that gives you an idea of how I would go in to building that part of the composition. But I also, I just want to do a single rose for you. And I'd like to just show you how I would position the leaves for that single rose. Because if you were to do this, and I'm going to do it in reds, because I just red roses. Um, let's do just that one single rose and have a look at how beautiful it looks. So first of all, I'm still working with my clover green, oh sorry, my green leaf. Now, this color has started to look very much like walnut because I've been using a bit of the red. So I'm gonna go into that red and get a little bit more of it. I'm gonna pick up some of the yellow, some of the clover, and I, because I want this to be quite a dark shade. And I'm going to put the top of the rosebud in first and I'm just going to slide that down. OK, so now I'm going to go into that rosebud here and this part of it is going to come like this. And I'm just going to do it as a little semicircle, like a, a part of a stem. And then the next part of it is I'm going to put in and I'm just going to do a couple of leaves. I'm just going to let the leaves just fall, just there. OK, so we're just going to put those little leaf, um, the sort of parts of the, the rose in. I'm also just going to come up around here and do some stems. And these I want to get a little bit of a curve to. So I'm going to come up. I'm using my finger to, to support my hand on the page. I really want to get some support on it as I'm working so that I can control the position of it. As I come up here, I'm just going to press out and lean back. And then I'm going to come up to the top and I'm just going to press out and I'm going to lean back. So putting in some extra little bits of detail. Wherever there is a, a join on the leaf, I'm going to put on the stem, I'm just going to put that little bit of detail there too. 
Now we're going to come into the green and we want this to be a much stronger green. So I'm not going to pick up any more of the um, of the yellow. And I'm going to just paint that leaf and it's going to be a lovely round, rounded leaf. And we're going to come down here and we're just going to pull that in and get a really nice sharp point to it. And this one is going to come from here. I'm going to come round. So I'm thinking about where my brush is and I'm going to come down there. So I'm going to come up here and just round. And I'm just going to let that go there. OK, next one. So thinking about the positioning, just picking up the green. So here I'm going to come again and I'm going to go round and out. And on this one, so look at the angle of where my brush is starting. I'm going to start here and I'm going to slide it round so that it looks like I've got a little turn in the leaf. And then again, there into the stem. So at the moment, I've just got those two leaves in. I think I might put another one here, actually. So I'm going to zigzag it down. And then back to, when I get to the bottom, let's get some more green on there and zigzag that down a bit more if you get to the bottom I'm just going to pull it round and swipe and pull round there so I've got those little leaves in so I've got a bit of a story going on now we're going to clean down our brush and I'm going to go into this really lovely red so I've got that nice strong colour it's really good. And the Sedona. So I've got red and Sedona. So this is going to be quite a dark flower, but it will look great. And I'm going to start up here. I'm just putting in that first petal. And I'm going to give myself some really nice, sort of quite curvy petals here. And we get curvy and we're going to go out there so Sedona and the red those two colors together it's going to come here really nice and smooth and creamy and don't worry about where the green is because that's meant to be behind we want to be able to see the depth of the oops I've got some green on this brush I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want it to spoil the design so I'm going to just pick those up and reload. So I'm just going to make sure I've reloaded this brush properly. I'm just going to tip the tiniest little bit of white on the edge of the brush just to get that edge so that it's really visible there. So let's go again. Tiniest little bit of white. And you'll start to think about where the colour is and what colour you need next to make this really look strong. And then I've got another petal. I'm just going to come there. Now, look at the difference it's made by putting that stem in first. It's made a huge difference to the design. It looks more balanced. We've got more detail in here. We're really sort of getting all the, the design to come together. And I think you can definitely, definitely see the results. So it's got a tiniest bit more of the light here. It's pulling that detail in. And some more of that red, which we've got. You can see pulling the colour together. I'm just going to come round again, really round there. More. Just side load in that white, just to give us a detail. I'm just going to put in a little wiggle at the back. I'm going to go up and down and round. So I'm getting detail in there. And then I'm going to put in that bud, which is too light. You can't see it. It's not going to be as strong as I want it to be. So I need to come in, get that more detail in. Get that in. Whoops. Let's get you in at the top. So in round the bottom. It's quite delicate, but I think it's working. 
little bit more white for this one. So we'll come round and round once more. And I'm going to break it in the middle. So you've got the gap. And then on this one, we're going to come round and I'm going to swing round. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll put the bottom layering first. So I'll swing that one round. Then on this side, we'll just pull in that little bit. And then on here, we're going to come up to the top and pull in and up to the top and just pull in. And there you go. There's our single rose with our stem and our lovely flowers, our petals. And I think it just looks so delicate. But wouldn't that make the most amazing birthday card for somebody who you just want to give something, you know, sort of special as or even framed? Do you know what? Just one flower framed. So um, a couple of things for you guys then. Don't forget, please, to sign up to our YouTube button, our YouTube button, our YouTube channel even. We'd really love to see you there, literally. There are thousands of people joining us every month. So we don't want you to miss out on the chance for all of that education that we've got for you. Second thing, if you're not already a member of Club Highlight, please join Club Highlight because not only is it free to join, but it does mean that you will also, you'll get points for every purchase. And if you're part of our database, we'll tell you about all your free classes and what's coming up soon. If you're watching me on the 17th of April, then I have a brand new launch on Create and Craft tomorrow at four o'clock, where I'm really excited to share with you some brand new compositions and a new technique that I haven't shown you about pattern matching. So that's going to be super exciting. So please join me at four o'clock. I'm also going to be using the Dora Metallics, which is going to be super exciting. And if you're watching before the 26th of April, we've got a really nice code for you. It's called Hybrid 20, and that will get you 20% off all our Cadence Hybrid acrylic paints on the Highlight Craft website. So let's just do one quick last look at what we did. Um, so you can see here is that full bouquet. Here is our single rose. Doesn't that just look gorgeous? And there is our corner rose. And I'm going to suggest if anybody watching, Andrew, could we just do a quick giveaway? So if anybody puts their name down in the next hour and a half, we will pick somebody at random. Is that the best way? How can we do this? Ah, I'm going to give them all to one person. I'm going to pick a number between one and 11. I'm going to pick number three. Jeanette. I think I might, can I, are you able to pull up a picture? Yeah. Ah, oh, she's on Zoom. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jeanette. Can you can you nod if you can hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, you can. I can see. I think she's leaning in to her computer. Hello. Hi. Thank you for waving. Can you email your, us your address? And I'm going to send you all my pictures. So we'll send you these. If you would email... She's got there. She's got it. Um, email me stephanie at highlightcrafts.com and I'll send you those. We'll get them in the post to you today. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you because you guys are my like little shining lights. And do you know what it is? It makes me feel so special that I know that people are painting because if you feel the way it makes me feel, then it is the best feeling in the world because it is so relaxing. I, I know it can be frustrating too when it doesn't go right, but when it does go right, it really feels good, doesn't it? So thank you, everybody. You're all absolute superstars. And I hope you can join me on Create and Craft. And don't forget, there'll be more of this coming up as often as I can do it for you. So check us out and we'll see you all soon. Lots of love. God bless. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. 
Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all of our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.